subsequent sessions uh, through the uh, uh, first um, uh, few months, she did talk a sentence or two. Usually it was to uh, wheedle some uh, ward um, uh, convenience. She had uh, a number of rituals that had to do with storing food and certain kinds of food. I should also say that uh, part of uh, Catherine's uh, history was that she had lost weight uh, up front in, uh, when she was about uh, 17. All the way, I, I met her, by the way, she was 19, uh, about 19 and, and a half. Uh, well, let me think, uh, 1969, she was 19 and a half, yeah. And she'd lost weight down to about 90 pounds. Uh, and she had very strict uh, rules that she had developed about what she was going to eat. Uh, uh, she also introduced me little by little into her world during that first year, but it was mighty little. Most of the session, oh, by the way, I, I saw her, uh, uh, Chris said uh, five days a week, it was actually six. Uh, I came in on Saturdays uh, and I sat for an hour, even if nothing was said. And during that hour, I would muse about uh, uh, something like, uh, well, I, I can see that you're in agony. And she would rock a little bit more. Uh, or I would say, uh, uh, I remember once about several, must have been several months into uh, my seeing her, uh, I said, well, I started inquiring about meanings. Um, like, for instance, her silence. Now, think about silence. Uh, that can have many meanings. If you're a uh, psychiatrist using the medical model, it's thought blocking. But if you're, uh, which is a sign of schizophrenia. But if you're looking for meanings, silence is uh, very loud. Uh, there can be uh, stubborn silence, terrified silence, um, contemplative silence. Um, uh, uh, up yours silence uh, there can be all <laughs> there can be all kinds of silence uh, now what 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 was I faced with um, uh, well I could see that there was also, there was some agony and so I would speculate s sitting with Catherine always per always prefacing my speculation with perhaps because I'm not a mind reader uh, I could not know. Uh, I, could, I could tell something from my gut, but I wasn't about to try and read her mind, since that uh, uh, would have been counter to everything that I was interested in. Uh, so I would say things like, uh, uh, well, per perhaps there's a safety factor in your silence. And I remember that that stopped her rocking. Uh, she would stop. Um, or I would ask her about her food rituals. What does, what does eating certain things at, uh, uh, at certain times a day mean? Why only certain foods? Uh, why so little food? What did it mean? Um, so uh, I, I could not understand that, uh, although I knew that it had great meaning, which is a meaning in itself. Uh, I should tell you that... Uh, uh, Catherine uh, was, uh, I was a first year resident at the time I met her. That meant I would be at UCLA for three years. Uh, the hospital was not designed to uh, treat or take care of cr what they call chronic patients. So uh, after about eight or nine months, I started running into resistance from the, uh, my superiors. Um, uh, well, we're not a chronic care hospital and uh, uh, at the uh, end of a year, uh, Catherine, uh, there was no observable change uh, in her uh, walking about the ward. She still sat on the couch all day in a catatonic position, head down on her chest, uh, chin right next to her chest, rocking a little bit. She got to the point at the end of the year where she uh, was so... Um, rigid that she did not even swallow her own saliva it would drool out of the it drooled out of the uh, off her chin onto the front of 
this little house dress that she would wear and would then uh, string from the hem of the dress into a puddle on the floor. Uh, and she sat there all day long like that. So I started catching it from the um, staff. Uh, what was I doing um, allowing this much agony to take place? Uh, uh, Catherine complained of hearing voices t literally 24 hours a day. They were multiple voices, out of classic for schizophrenia. Uh, they were accusatory voices. Um, kill your mother, kill your sister, kill your mother, over and over and over, even at night. Uh, toward the end of the first year, Catherine did tell me that uh, she, uh, she, uh, the, these voices caused her great agony. Um, now again, uh, my intent was not to eliminate voices. That wasn't my role. You'd think, well, what is a psychiatrist's role? Um, I took the position that I wanted to understand where the voices came from. So I asked. Uh, Catherine didn't know, so I would speculate. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, these voices represent you. Uh, uh, Catherine actually agreed that that was so, and she responded by telling me that she was evil. Uh, and I, being uh, young at that time, uh, tended to counter that. I didn't want to see her as evil. Uh, and uh, short, right at the end of the first year, uh, I, I, I said something like, well, you feel evil. And she, uh, head still down, she uh, hunched her shoulders and said, all right. <laughs> um, uh, all I do is hear voices all day long to kill my mother, my brother, or my sisters. Uh, I, not, I don't feel evil. I am evil. Now look, she had a point, didn't she? Uh, what is she supposed to feel? Like an angel? Uh, having uh, thoughts to kill uh, members of her family? Uh, she did feel like she was bad. And, uh, uh, and uh, I began to understand that. Uh, as opposed to my efforts to try and uh, uh, not accept that. I, I did have to accept that. And there were other feeling states now that I had to understand. Um, she uh, told me, for instance, that, um, uh, well, uh, sticking with the evil, she uh, told me a dream once. Now, notice that uh, at the end of the first year here, uh, she's still sitting quietly. She's uh, hardly getting dressed in the morning. The nurses have to bathe her. Uh, the nurses have to make sure that she even put uh, shoes on the right feet. She would uh, shuffle around the uh, ward in a slow shuffle. Um, she uh, 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 still was trying to use the hours that I saw her to secure refrigerator space for her uh, food and to uh, have me intervene so that she wouldn't have to be around people. Uh, I asked her, well, what, what, why don't you want to be around people? Uh, I'm evil. I shouldn't be uh, uh, with other people. And then she said, and you shouldn't uh, be with me either. Uh, and I thought to my, why? You'll be made evil too. You'll be ugly. Well, I mean, think about that now. Uh, I, you know, when she told me that, I thought, um, my goodness, uh, I'll try to think of the author, uh, Rappuccini's daughter. Do you know the story? Uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne. Uh, I thought to myself, my goodness, uh, the story, very briefly, is uh, there's this uh, beautiful young girl uh, who was reared by uh, her father, Rappuccini, and Rappuccini grew poisonous plants in the backyard. And a young man from uh, the neighboring building uh, falls in love with this young girl from on high. Uh, I guess that is really what love is anyway, isn't it, uh, from on high? And there he was. Uh, so he uh, attempted to make contact with her, but she knew that she could not touch anything except anybody except the plants because she was also poisonous like the poisonous plants. Uh, so, but she too fell in love with him, and uh, she told him, um, 
that she could not to touch him, which was uh, uh, an awful dilemma. Uh, but uh, her desire was so great that what she did was she drank poison and killed herself in order to spare him. Now, uh, see, there was a, uh, that story had meaning to me because that's what Catherine was trying to do, and I actually said that to her. Perhaps you're trying to protect me. Um, and I thought maybe for the first time I saw a tear um, and uh, a kind, the nurses noted a kind of wailing uh, that occurred from her room that night. Um, the, uh, 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 my understanding of uh, the security of uh, being silent uh, she reminded me of another story by Kafka of a, of a mole who lived in a hole and kept burrowing deeper. Uh, I think the story is called The Burrow. Um, and the mole uh, tried to find a castle keep within, the, within his hole for safety. Um, but you see, what I'm emphasizing is not symptoms here. I'm emphasizing struggle. Uh, I'm emphasizing something else, too. Uh, I'm emphasizing that uh, uh, Catherine was seeking something and was creating something for herself to get away from her own uh, horror. Uh, you know, that's often ignored when we look at, uh, from mental health professionals' point of view, we don't look at what the individual is creating himself or herself. Um, at the end of the uh, first year, things got worse. Uh, over the second year I saw Catherine, I was still seeing her six days a week, uh, and I was, uh, uh, Catherine then uh, closed her eyes and wouldn't open them. And uh, she would walk around the ward, the ward, but through little slits, and she'd shuffle around, um, bumping into things. Uh, when I would come to get her on the ward for our uh, hour, uh, what she would do is follow behind me, uh, into the elevator and stand at the back of the elevator and once I got out of the elevator and the doors shut and just before the doors shut I hear from the back of the elevator shit <laughs> uh, and I thought darn you know she's in there isn't she um, but for the next uh, uh, two years now, uh, she walks around the ward shuffling like this, and I'm really running into um, resistance on the part of the staff uh, now. Uh, when I get ready to go on vacation, uh, Catherine informs uh, one of the nurses that uh, she's going to kill herself. Um, the nurses would find uh, pins and uh, scissors at one time in her uh, wardrobe. Um, uh, the nurses were convinced that uh, she would uh, do this.